welcome to the A-State Red Wolves year in review special for the 2023-2024 athletic season here on ASU TV. I'm Tristan Harlan, sports producer for ASU TV, and in this show, you'll hear from students from Mr. Sullivan's sports production class recap and discuss all that has happened with the A-State Red Wolves this past season for all the sports. We'll also have Red Wolf Roundtable co-hosts Cooper Milder and myself give our State of A-State Athletic comment. Right now, I'll send it over to Mackenzie for what's to come on today's show. I'm Mackenzie Cutler, and I'll be recapping all that happened with the fall sports at Arkansas State. From the Arkansas State football's team dynamic season that concluded with a bowl game appearance, to telling you how the volleyball, soccer, and cross-country teams performed in their season. We'll also review the fall results of the men's and women's golf teams. Now over to Jacob. I'm Jacob Tester, and I'll be covering the winter sports. We'll talk about the success from the A-State men's basketball team under first-year head coach Brian Hodson and what the future looks like for the men's basketball at A-State. You'll also hear about the season, how the season went for women's basketball team. We'll wrap our segment talking about the success and accolades surrounding the indoor track and field season, along with recapping the bowling team's third appearance in the national championship match in the last four years. Now, over to JoJo. What's going on, y'all? I'm JoJo Wallace, and I'll be taking you through the spring sports. While all the teams are still competing in the spring seasons, we'll be bringing you up to speed on all that has happened to today, including talking about the baseball, outdoor track and field, the tennis team, and golf. Now, back to you, Tristan. At the end of our show, myself and fellow Red Wolf Roundtable co-host Cooper Melder will give our A State State of A State Athletics conversation. After the commercial break, we'll talk all things football, volleyball, soccer, golf, and cross country. You're watching the A State Red Wolves Year in Review Show. We'll be right back after this. Students should watch ASU TV just to see the creativity that a college student can get. The creativity that some of these students have is, is truly amazing. Getting that experience can really just take you further and I feel like our program does that for a lot of students. ASU TV, covering all your favorite sports. From Red Wolf Roundtable to Westside Football and more, ASU TV has you covered. Tune in now to ASU TV for news and coverage on these sports and more. Welcome back to the A-State Red Wolves Year in Review 2023-24 special. I'm Mackenzie Cutler and I'll be recapping everything that happened during the fall with the Red Wolves. We'll start with the A-State football team. The season began with one of the worst losses in school history as the Red Wolves fell to Oklahoma Sooners 73 to nothing. A-State would go to 2-0 the very next week as they fell to rival Memphis only scoring three points in the first two games of the season. The season began picking up as the Red Wolves went to win three straight games against Stony Brook, Sunbelt, Foe, Southern Miss, and UMass. It was against UMass that quarterback Jalen Rayner passed for a school tying record six touchdowns. The Red Wolves went on to finish the regular season with a four and four Sunbelt conference record and an overall record of six and six. Six wins would be just enough for A-State to clinch a bowl bid. The Red Wolves would take on Northern Illinois in the Camellia Bowl on December 23rd. A 13-yard touchdown pass from Jalen Rayner to Corey Rucker made it a two-point game with just over a minute left. But the Arkansas State football team could not complete the comeback in a 21-19 controversial conclusion. As the Red Wolves recovered their initial onside kick attempt to gain possession near the end of the game, but a re-kick was issued after an offside penalty. Northern Illinois then recovered the ensuing kick before running out the clock. 
A state's football final record would stand at six and seven. Jalen Rayner would end up being the declared the Sun Belt's freshman of the year, with the Red Wolves taking home 11 total postseason Sun Belt honors. Coming into the 2024 season, A state will face defending national champion Michigan in week three of the season. A season that includes several rule changes, a couple of those key changes including the introduction of a two-minute warning and the ability for teams to use helmet audio communications. All these rules are similar to what the NFL already has in place. Let's now move on to A-State Volleyball's season recap. Entering the second season with head coach Brian Gerwig at the helm, the Red Wolves look to improve from the last season nine and 22 overall record. The Red Wolves would win all three of their matches in their home invitational to start the season and would win five of their first six matches overall. A-State would sweep three matches at the Bear Invitational at Missouri State right before going into conference play. Conference play did not see very many match wins produced by the Red Wolves as they went five and 11 in conference play. As the sixth seed in the West Division of the Sun Belt Conference Tournament, A-State Volleyball would go on to win their first round match against Georgia State. However, their season would end in the second round against Georgia Southern. Their season did not end after the Sun Belt Tournament though. The Red Wolves would be invited to play in the NIVC postseason tournament. Unfortunately, they would fall in the first round of the tournament to Wichita State. The team's overall record for the 2023 would stand at 16 and 15. Arkansas State's volleyball's Tegan Sayring was awarded College Sports Communicators Academic All-District Honors at the conclusion of the season. The A-State soccer team finished their season with four wins, eight losses, and four ties including only two wins in Sun Belt Conference play. After the season, six members of the Arkansas State women's soccer team were awarded College Sports Communicators Academic All-District Honors. Repping the Red Wolves on this year's list were Phoebe Harpole, Olivia Luther, Emma Riles, Mackenzie Robinson, Darby Stotts, and Aliyah Williamson. The academic all-district women's soccer team recognizes the nation's top student athletes for their combined performances on the field and in the classroom. We end our recap of the fall sports for Arkansas State with the men's and women's cross country teams. A dominant showing propelled the Arkansas State women's cross country team to its fourth conference title in five seasons on at the Sunbelt Conference Championship. A state women's placed four runners in the top 15 en route to 48 points, ahead of runner-up James Madison, 89, while men finished second with 47 points behind champion Appalachian State with 28 points. After leading the Arkansas State women's cross-country team to its fourth Sun Belt Conference title in five seasons, A-State's Rahel Brommel and head cross-country coach Jesse Duval garnered postseason honors. Duvall's honor is his fourth Women's Coach of the Year honor and sixth overall. The 2023 season also marks the fifth consecutive year in which he has earned at least one of the two Coach of the Year awards. Capping another strong season for A State Women's Cross Country, Rahel Brommel placed 203rd on Saturday morning at the NCAA Cross Country Championships as a freshman. That's all for the Fall Sports Recap. We'll be right back with the Winter Sports Recap right after this break. Students should watch ASU TV just to see the creativity that a college student can get. The creativity that some of these students have is, is truly amazing. Getting that experience can really just take you further and I feel like our program does that for a lot of students. ASU TV, covering all your favorite sports. From Red Wolf Roundtable to Westside Football and more, ASU TV has you covered. Tune in now to ASU TV for news and coverage on these sports and more.
Welcome back to the A-State Red Wolves Year in Review 2023-24 special on ASU TV. I'm Jacob Tester and I'll be recapping the winter sports seasons. We start with the A-State men's basketball season, which saw the Red Wolves post a successful first season under new head coach Brian Hodson. Their 20-17 overall record included a big non-conference win at Louisville in December on national television. The Red Wolves battled to an 11-7 conference record, including winning six of their first seven games to clinch the number four seed in the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. A dominant defensive effort paved the way for Arkansas State men's basketball team's offensive firepower and a season-high 14 steals as the fourth-seeded Red Wolves topped Louisiana 89-62 in the quarterfinals of the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. The win propelled the Red Wolves into the semifinals of the Sun Belt Tournament for the first time since 2014, while their 27-point margin of victory marked the largest ever in a conference tournament game. Four Red Wolves scored in double figures, led by Freddie Hicks' season-high 23 points on 8 of 14 and 6 of 6 from the foul line. Hicks also grabbed seven rebounds and tallied two blocks and two steals. Darian Ford and Taryn Todd scored 18 points apiece, combining for 15 baskets, with DeAndre Dominguez scoring 10 points with five boards in reserve action. Isaiah Nelson added nine points and a game-high eight boards, while Avery Feltz matched career-high with four steals, a block, and 11 deflections. In the semifinals of the Sun Belt Conference Tournament, we saw one of the greatest endings to a tournament history. Has to get something going. Two seconds. Turn around, throws it up. It makes it! It was Freddie Hicks! I told you it was Freddie Hicks, the second generation Red Wolf, has clinched the championship spot for the Arkansas State Red Wolves. Freddie Hicks with the isolation play, the one guy you don't expect that from. It's Freddie Hicks with the shot in the lane, sending the Red Wolves to the championship game tomorrow. During a timeout with 14.6 seconds remaining, Arkansas State men's basketball guard Freddie Hicks told head coach Brian Hodson he wanted the ball in the final seconds. And get the ball he did, sinking a game-winning floater at the buzzer to lift the fourth-seeded Red Wolves past number one seed Appalachian State 67-65 inside the Pensacola Bay Center and punch their ticket to the Sun Belt Conference championship game. Caleb Fields led all players in scoring with 23 points and went 8 for 9 at the foul line. The senior maestro accom accompanied timely buckets with 6 assists on the night and helped pave the way for a 44.1% clip from the field. While Hicks scored a game-high 24 points, the Arkansas State men's basketball team dropped a tough 91-71 decision to the second-seeded James Madison Dukes in the Sun Belt Conference Tournament Championship game. After the season, the A-State men's basketball team will accept an invitation to the College Basketball Invitational Tournament, where they would advance to the semifinals of the tournament before falling to high point by one point. The Red Wolves would end with a 20-17 and overall record. Senior guard Caleb Fields was voted, voted first team all, -SEC Sun, or all Sun Belt Conference, while Taryn Todd earned third team distinction. The duo led the Red Wolves to an 11-7 and conference record with a number four seed in the conference tournament. The 11 league wins are the most by an A-State team since 2016-17, while the number four seed is the program's highest non-divisional seeding since being seeded fourth in 2014. We move on to the A-State women's basketball season, which saw the emergence of Izzy Higginbottom to the first team all Sun Belt, along with Lauren Pendleton reaching 1,000 career points during her time at Arkansas State. In a season of ups and downs, they would see a four-game winning streak in January and February and a seven-game losing streak to end the 2023-24 season. Coach Destiny Rogers' team would end the season with a 13-17 overall record and a 6-12 record in Sun Belt Conference play. After the season, the news wouldn't be the best for the A-State women's basketball team as a majority of the team would enter the transfer portal and leave the program, including Higginbottom, to the team up in northwest Arkansas. Arkansas State track and field made history this winter, sweeping the Sun Belt Conference indoor championship team titles for the fifth year in a row, becoming the only program in league history to accomplish such a feat. A-State has now won 12 men's indoor conference titles, with the women claiming their ninth league crown. A-State director and track and field co cross country dim. A-State director of track and field and cross country, Dr. Jim Patchell, once again swept the Sunbelt Conference Indoor Coach of the Year honors, the 21st and 22nd of his career. The Red Wolves have won a combined 29 league crowns under his watch, 
with the men's team winning its 12th indoor conference title and the women capturing their ninth. Pole vault champion Bradley Jelmer earned men's field performer of the year distinction after taking gold with a meet record clearing distance of 5.62 meters. Michelle Ogbemudia was named league's women's newcomer of the year after breaking her own school record to win gold in the weight throw. 20 athletes earned all Sunbelt Conference honors based on athletes' highest podium finishes at the championships. Gold medals earned first team honors, while those winning silver and bronze received second and third team laurels. Bradley Jelmert became the first Arkansas State men's track and field athlete to medal at the NCAA Indoor Championships since 2017, taking silver in the men's pole vault on Friday afternoon at the track and new balance. Colby Eddowes capped a stellar indoor campaign at the NCAA Indoor Championships, placing seventh in the heptathlon. We wrap up our recap of the winter sports teams here at A-State, talking about the success of the A-State women's bowling team. In head coach Justin Kostick's 15th season at the helm, the Red Wolves would make it all the way to the NCAA Championships. Advancing to the national championship match for the third time in the last four seasons and fourth time in program history, the Arkansas State women's bowling team finished runner-up in the National Collegiate Bowling Championship. Number one overall seed Jacksonville State overcame a 3-2 deficit to defeat the Red Wolves in a Game 7 for the national championship. Tying for the best finish in program history, A-State runner, took runner-up honors for the third time in the last four years and fourth time in program history. You had a, a wonderful, tremendous season, as you just mentioned. What do you want this team to be known for? Um, I would say like our positive energy and just never giving up and fighting whenever things get hard and just kind of just being us and never drifting apart from each other. So, Just being able to come back from hard moments, like this is the second time, but we never gave up. We got back here again. Um, Hoping to bring that back into next year. They gave me everything that I had. I mean, Faith and Emma bowled injured. You know, the last, you know, Emma was injured for most of the season. Faith flared up on her um, after North Carolina or whatever. And so, I mean, they gave everything that they possibly had. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better group of gals with Faith, uh, Emma, and Brooklyn. Bowlers Brooklyn Buchanan and Carly Van Duen earned all tournament team honors. A-State closed the successful season 87-28 and 28 on the year with four tournament titles, including the Rochester Regional. Emma Stuff, Carly Van Duen, or Emma Stoll, Carly Van Duen, Brooklyn Buchanan, and Faith Welch of the Arkansas State women's bowling team were recognized by the National Tenpin Coaches Association as All-American selections. That's all for the Winter Sports Recap. We'll be right back with Spring Sports Recap right after the break. Students should watch ASU TV just to see the creativity that a college student can get. The creativity that some of these students have is, is truly amazing. Getting that experience can really just take you further and I feel like our program does that for a lot of students. ASU TV, covering all your favorite sports. From Red Wolf Roundtable to Westside Football and more, ASU TV has you covered. Tune in now to ASU TV for news and coverage on these sports and more. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the A-State Red Wolves Year in Review on ASU TV. I'm JoJo Wallace, recapping everything that has happened in the spring sports up to this point in time. Now, the A-State baseball team started the season hot in the best way, winning eight straight games, including a humongous win in Oxford, Mississippi against Ole Miss. They won that game by a score of 4-2. to two. And as it stands today, the Red Wolves are 
have 19 wins, 24 losses, and one tie, with only six wins in Sunbelt Conference play. The Rebels' offense is led by Austin Jaslov, who has a 311 average with 46 hits, four doubles, five home runs, and 22 runs batted in. The speedy Blake Burris has stolen 13 bases to lead the Red Wolves this season. Now, starting pitcher Dylan Heine has one of the best ERAs in the Sun Belt Conference with a 3.70. He has two wins in 11 appearances with 11 strikeouts. It's been an accum accumulation of wins and successes for the A-State track and field teams up to this point in the season. Before the season began, it was announced that head coach and director of track and field and cross country, Dr. Jim Patchell, the program's all-time winningest head coach, has tabbed as part of the 29th class in the Arkansas State Track Hall of Fame. Ooh, in the, in the class, hold on, hold on, hold on. Has been tabbed as the 29th class in the Arkansas State Track and Field Hall of Fame. The program's 12th inductee into the hall will be inducted during a banquet held on Friday, May 31st. Now, several track and field athletes have had their results included in the top 10 of event records for Arkansas State, including Renisha Andrews in the 100-meter dash, Cadence Lapp in the 3,000-meter steeplechase, Olivia Walter in the 10,000 meters, Rahil Brummel in the 800 meters, Miranda Burgett in the high jump, Michelle Agaboom... What? Ag Hold on. Michelle Agaboomdia in the hammer throw, Bella Cosset in the pole fault, Silly Sepram, Michelle Ogbunda, and Nalet Doal in the shot put, Miranda Burgett in the Hepta Flaplan, Hanel Sla, bro, what? Hanel Fall and Cash Kunkel in the 1500 meters, Cash Kunkel in the 3000 meters steeplechase, Dawson Mayberry and Natty Enright in the 10,000 meters, Kobe Edowas and Kenyon Parker in the 110 meter hurdles. Noah Isayo in the hammer throw, William Kozerzen in the shot put, and Manishim Chen with the top 10 discus throw in school history. The track and field outdoor season will conclude with the Sembo Conference Championship in Monroe, Alabama, and the NCAA Outdoor Championship in Eugene, Oregon. In his first season at the helm of the program, A-State Tennis saw a massive jump in wins from the previous season. The Red Wolves won eight matches this season, with four of those against Sunbelt Conference opponents. Their season will come to a conclusion in the first round of the Sunbelt Conference Tournament against Southern Miss. Now, the A-State women's golf team won the Atlantic Invitational, defeating six other teams to take the title in Lake Worth, Florida. The Red Wolves will go on to finish fifth overall in the Sunbelt Conference Championship and will compete in the National Golf Invitational this May. We wrap up the spring sports segments with the A-State men's golf team, the Sun Belt Conference champions, winning on a second sudden death playoff hole. Thomas Schmidt clinched the second Sun Belt Conference championship in program history for the Arkansas State men's golf team. There it is right there, as you can see it. A-State earned an automatic bid to the NCAA championship after defeating Texas State and ULM in match play to cap off the four-day league tournament at Annandale Golf Club. While the Red Wolves won their second Sun Belt title Thursday, it was their third all-time conference championship after also winning the Sun Belt match play title in 2019 and the American South Conference in 1989. The squad will now make their seventh all-time team appearance in the NCAA Regional and first since 2019. In addition to making the NCAA tournament, Arkansas State men's golf sophomore Thomas Schmidt was named the Sun Belt Conference Golfer of the Year, and head coach Mike Hagen was named Sun Belt Conference Coach of the Year. Clap it up for them. That's all for the Spring Sports Recap. After the break, we'll join Tristan Harlan and Cooper Meldon with their State of A-State Athletics Conversation. You're watching the A-State Rebels Year in Review 2023-2024 special on ASU TV. Students should watch ASU TV just to see the creativity that a college student can get. The creativity that some of these students have is, is truly amazing. Getting that experience can really just take you further and I feel like our program does that for a lot of students. 
ASU TV, covering all your favorite sports. From Red Wolf Roundtable to Westside Football and more, ASU TV has you covered. Tune in now to ASU TV for news and coverage on these sports and more. Welcome to the state of A-State Athletics here with the Roundtable crew. Yes. Chris Darla Cooper, the Juice Box Matter. Cooper, welcome back. Thank you. I thought we were done with the show, but apparently it's the show that will never die. It won't die, but, you know, I'm glad to be helping out with Mr. Sullivan's class today and bring on the year in review for sports for A-State Athletics. Yeah, it's a little kind of flashback to last year when your class did the show and I was the guest host with Easton John and Jeff Pierrenton, but now you're here yes. as our special guest, so. I'm honored. Honored. Yes. Honored as always. But Cooper, we had a very successful year on the athletic term for Arkansas State Athletics. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and start talking about some of the things. Okay. Beginning with soccer. You know, soccer, they've been in the headlines recently with some kind of things that a lot of people don't want to talk about with the sanctions and everything like that. But Cooper, looking at the A-State soccer team ahead of their next season, where do you think the most improvement lies for the squad? It has to come on their offensive pressure. I mean, we did not see it. Uh, when I was going through my footage last night, the only highlights I had was um, just save after save after save. We were not really good on the offensive mo moments. We couldn't get any really offensive firepower we're going. So if we can focus on getting more offensive pushes and more looks on shots on goals, they would be a lot better than just a four-win team because we came here our freshman year, top dogs of the Sun Belt, and it just seems like year after year after year, they slowly started falling off. So we need to see them to get, get back in their reins, just, you know, focus on offense because the defense is there. You have a great goalkeeper. Just there's no offensive movement at all. Right, and you I mean you kind of you hit the hammer on the head with the offense. I mean, Aaliyah Williamson, we've talked about her numerous times on Red Wolf Roundtable about how she's able to strike, get the ball in the goal. Talked about her during the sort of scrimmage against Harding that happened in Centennial Bank Stadium. But I just think there's a lot of unanswered questions for the soccer team. Of course, Coach Dooley, how does his kind of punishment with the NCAA sanctions affect the team? What's going to be kind of the, you know, sort of preference for the season? I mean, are they going to have all their starters? Are they not going to have all their starters? What are their recruits going to look like? How much of this is the punishment going to affect the team? But I think once, you know, off, you know, off season still going for them, but once they get through the summer workouts and everything, they'll come back stronger for the season, and I'm sure you know they're one, two pieces away from the Sun Belt Conference Championship. Oh, for sure. If they can just get a couple more pieces to their style of play, they will be a lot better. But like Tristan was saying, the suspensions is really going to hurt this team. We don't really know the full extent of what's going to happen, especially with the head coach, because he's on a year of probation with the soccer team. So recruiting-wise, this might set them back a couple years than they wanted to you know they were trying to get back to where they were only four wins they might be looking at another four win season with all the suspensions going on so overall this soccer team didn't succeed I would honestly give them a D plus at best okay no I mean that, and that's fair great I'm right in the same boat with you but now we're going to move on to the old football team the old team pig that, skin. the old pigskin on the turf in Centennial Bank Stadium and team that we've Enjoy talking about over the course of the fall semester. But, I mean, this team, I, I will say this. The, the best thing Bush Jones did last season was put Rayner in as a starter against Southern Miss. I mean, he came in against Stony Brook, absolutely lit it up. Lit it up. You know, Jeff Foreman just got signed to the Las Vegas Raiders, almost called them the Oakland Raiders, as an undrafted free agent. But I just think this team – it has a lot of willpower on the offensive side. Of course, that's always been a kind of question mark with the weak offensive line, kind of letting a sacks happen to James Blackman, now Jalen Rayner. But 
the thing that I like about the Steam Cooper before I send it to you is how much competition they have at every single position. Yes, they have competition everywhere. I mean, we're bringing in players through the transfer portal, bringing in great recruits. And, you know, Butch Jones just capped off another. That's three in a row. Top dogs in the Sun Belt, number one recruiting class in the Sun Belt. So we're seeing this. He went two wins, three wins, six wins. You've had three straight years with the top recruiting class in the Sun Belt. When are you going to see them take it to their next level? When are they going to be competing for a Sun Belt Conference championship? And the way Sun Belt, the Sun Belt Conference is, there's not a designated spot for the championship game. So if we're the higher seed, if we're the one seed, the championship game will be played here in Jonesboro, Arkansas, which would just be absolutely tremendous, Tristan. Um, but it's going to be interesting. You know, we had the spring game. Uh, this past weekend, two weekends ago, and you know the defense looked really good, but it, the offense, the starting ones, they also look like they haven't played since December. So I don't know if that made the defense looked a little bit better, but it was kind of like one of those things we would have good drives and then, in the old-fashioned Coach Heckendorf way stalled out the next couple drives. Right, and I think a lot of the kind of proving ground is one of those things where. You know, there's a lot of competition. Of course, you got Jaquez Cross running back, Zach Wallace at the running back position. But look at the ability of the offense that Coach Heckendorf and Coach Jones have to kind of open up the offense with kind of a wild Red Bull formation with Malik Hornsby, Josh Flowers, and guys like that. But I just think overall that this team did a well, had a well season, and for that, I'm giving them the grade of a C minus. A C minus. I room cannot... for improvement. Did good, but not too great. I'd give them a solid C. I mean, here at Arkansas State, you may be like, well, they made a bowl game after only winning five total wins the past two years. Yeah, but if you look back in the early 2010s, that era, they were winning the Sun Belt almost every other year. So I, you got to hold them to high standards, especially with a coach like Butch Jones. I mean, he's had success at Tennessee for a little bit. Rough road there. Then he went at Alabama. He was under one of the, if not the greatest head coach of all time, Nick Saban, and learned everything about under him. So him being an SEC coach and those are being the top dogs, you expect a lot more than what he's produced. So I feel like a C minus C is a good grade, but it's just going to be a matter of time until they take that next step. But if they don't, when are you going to see, okay, it's time to move on? Well, you know, that's a question that we'll have to kind of brew on over the summer and come back to Red Wolf Round Table and really start to look at the possible litigations behind that answer. But moving on, kind of just going all over the place here with basketball, basketball, men's basketball, especially Brian Hodson's first season as the Red Wolves head coach. Man, what a year they had. That was a great year. You know, they started off a little bit slower than everyone expected because we lost at home to Jackson State. You don't lose a game to Jackson State. That's just a game you have to win, and you're thinking, all right, here we go. It's kind of the same ordeal. We get hyped up for basketball season, and they get let down. But, man, does that team have fight led by senior guard Caleb Fields, along with a couple transfers, notable one, Darian Ford, great guard. It's just they went on a win streak, and they just kept winning and winning and winning. You're seeing highlights against James Madison. This was a game they got beat in. They lost by four, but it was a game they started down big in the first half. You know, they couldn't buy a three-pointer to save their lives. But after that James Madison game, a flip switched, and the next thing you know, this team's on ESPN. Yeah, and, you know, this team did a lot of things well. They shot the three ball a little bit well. Um, Freddie Hicks, I, I'm sad to see him go. You know, he announced recently that he's going back to Charleston State. But my biggest thing with this team is, is they have a lot of fight, as you mentioned, but they also have a lot of determination and a lot left to prove. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of good pieces that came over to the transfer portal, Colby Julian being that guy that I'm mentioning, yes. just opinion from the U of A, guy, guys just from high school coming in. But my thing is, is, okay, did the standard get set too high for year two of Coach Hodson? Don't get me wrong. Kobe Julian, great Sun Belt basketball player. He proved time and time again when Arkansas State would play La La, Louisiana. But 
How well does he fit in Brian Hodson's system? How well does he fit with guys like Terrence Ford, Isaiah Nelson, DeAndre Dominguez, Avery Feltz, now Joseph Pinion? Don't get me wrong. I'm excited for the. I'm, I'm excited that he's at Arkansas State Red Wolf because I don't want to see him like two times a year. But now I'm kind of saying, okay, did the first year going to the Sun Belt Conference Championship almost set an unprecedentable level that you can't get to year two unless you win Not the at whole all. thing? Not at all. I think it's what should be expected. You know, this team that's coming up next this next year is, in my opinion, way better than the team we had last year. Now we had a couple veterans on the team. We're going to be bringing in a little bit new faces, but we're also going to be having the same core guys that are played here last year and they're now playing here again this year. And if Kobe Julian is a great player and he's going to prove that, he's going to have to be able to, you know, change his style of play, work, learn how to work with different types of people. He's going to have to be showing that he's a team player and that, you know, maybe he doesn't need to average almost 20 points per game to win. He's going to be a lot, have a lot more talent around him where he can, you know what, maybe I can just average 15 a game and eight more assists. It's going to be, I think, Coach Hodson, he raised the bar high, but it's because we know he can get there. He proved right. it this year with a four seed. So if, you can, if he can consistently stay at a four through one seed, he would be really, really good coach. And I think that's what's going to happen. He's going to prove it what's again your and again. What's uh, For making it to Sun Belt Conference Championship, give him a B plus. The only way you get an A is if you win it. In okay, that's fair. I, I was thinking the same thing, same brain with, same brain length there. Something like that. Something like that. You know, we make our own words up here on the show sometimes. Yeah. But you know, moving on, we had we still we've got a clip from Brad Bobo talking about some renovations for Arkansas State baseball and maybe some other things. So let's go ahead and take a look at that, and we'll be right back. Obviously, I think the one you know that's no big secret and the one people want to talk about the most is baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the one facility that really hasn't had a whole lot done for it and uh it's no mystery and i'm not speaking out of turn to say it's we're woefully behind in baseball facilities because of what we talked about with the sunbelt you're playing in one of the best conferences literally in america and from a facility standpoint you know it's it's accurate to say we've not equipped coach raffo to compete on a level playing field with the rest of people in our league who just have mostly have phenomenal facilities. So I can promise you that um, our people know that. I can promise you that um, there are conversations being had on a daily basis uh, about kind of what those next steps are. I know there was once upon a time where some drawings were out there, but I don't know that they had a lot of a plan attached to it. and. A goal without a plan is a wish. Mm -hmm. right. The next time our fans see drawings or plans for a baseball stadium, it's not going to be a wish. It's going to be the plan, and it's going to have a plan, and it will have you know financial numbers attached to it is what it will take to make that a reality. And I would tell people that they would probably see that sooner than later. Man, oh, man, Cooper, if that comes to, to it fruition – it's going to be fun being an Arkansas State Red Bull. Yes, you know, baseball, they're really the biggest sport that needs renovations. They need it badly. I mean, me and Tristan's been talking about it forever now. We're talking about, you know, our high school has better, just a better stadium, better equipment than a college team, a Sunbelt college team does. But I'm kind of skeptical. Okay. We've been hearing about renovations since our freshman year. You know, they've drawn up a big blue blueprint. You know, we're going to change the stadium, make it a lot nicer. And then things go on. Nothing's here. It's like they're making promises to recruits. It's almost like they're trying to put this out here and be like, if you come here and play for us, we're going to have all these new things by your junior year, your sophomore year. That we're going to have a better field, all these renovations. And it's like they never happen. I mean, we see a, we've seen a little bit of renovation to football. We added the, the new black uh, chairs, uh, the party deck. I don't, not my favorite renovation, but the baseball thing, I'm, I'm skeptical. I won't believe it until it actually happens. Right. Well, Cooper, 
I do once again want to say thanks for coming on, my buddy. Always bailing thanks us out of the pinch. Me. Yep. Always bailing us out. Calling but, in the relievers, some might ahead. say. Go ahead and cue up Wild Thing, Mr. Sullivan. But that'll do it for this ASU TV special, A-State Athletics 2023-2024 year in review. We'd like to thank Mr. Sullivan's sports production class for all their hard work and effort putting this ASU TV special on air. To find out more about all things A-State Athletics, please visit astateredwolves.com. And for more information on everything ASU TV, please visit asutv.com. Thank you all for watching.